For Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst, Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled, Albert Nolan, Memories of a Non-Believer. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you very much. So why is Father Albert Nolan so important to you, a person who is an atheist? When I first met him, uh, I just thought he was an ordinary comrade who was a priest. And, you know, I just related to him. I didn't pay much attention to his beliefs. Um, and I came to appreciate over time that I had a lot to learn from him. I didn't... I must make it clear, I didn't study biblical texts. I didn't, I've never read any biblical text from beginning to end. Uh, what I gained from him was the type of understanding that he had because of his having studied those texts and uh, got conclusions way, which I found enriched my understanding of politics because he calls his type of theology contextual theology. You don't just worship the Lord or Jesus Christ. You actually have to contextualize it in the context of South Africa, where he says uh, the God that he worships is one who stands with the poor and with the oppressed. But he, he was also a very exemplary human being in many ways. You know, when I was having fights, say, with the ANC and the Communist Party and I was isolated, he would say to me things like, have you got a support group? So he was concerned. He knew that if you're on your own, you need human resources to stand with you. So he had a pastoral uh, relationship to people like me, even though I wasn't part of his church. But his way of analyzing was very similar in some ways to the way we used to analyze. He called it reading the signs of the times. What we would call it is understanding what is happening, or understanding the current conjuncture, and the way in which they did things like the Kairos document was really, in some ways, much more advanced than what we were trying to theorize as non-believers. So I'm very indebted to him uh, in a way that is unorthodox in that I don't come into that indebtedness from having been a member of the church or anything like that. And while you say you learned a lot from Father Nolan, what exactly is it that you learned? What I think is at the center of his belief systems, and it goes along with saying that Jesus Christ or the Lord stand with the poor, is that you don't just stand with the poor as an idea, as an intellectual construct. You have compassion, you have empathy, you have solidarity. You put yourself in the shoes of the poor and the oppressed, and you give, give your whole life to that. Now, what I started to understand from the way it was expressed as Christians was that they embodied the experiences of the oppressed as their own. Now, in some ways, that made me understand how there had been a betrayal in South Africa, because when we got involved, many of us embodied the experiences of the oppressed as our life, as our being. But at a certain point in time, many of these people no longer did that. And that is how I can understand commitment, that you embody it, but also betrayal, that you rupture that connection, you break that connection. It no longer is your life. And so there's a parallel, especially in the case of someone who becomes a Catholic priest, who swears a vow of poverty and celibacy. It's very much like what revolutionaries are supposed to do, that you put everything into your life as a revolutionary, especially when you are operating illegally. You don't get involved in a lot of things 
that ordinary fun lovers get involved in. So there was a lot of commonalities, but also the way he looked at them, uh, I learned from. And I was very surprised when he first thought that when they were drawing up the Kairos document, they should consult with someone like me, who was not a believer. It showed you the openness, the willingness to learn from a number of different sources. So that was very important to me. And lastly, Raymond, what is it in Father Nolan's legacies that we should be carrying forward today? You see, everything I've been saying is serious, but what Father Nolan also believed in was joy that you must be happy together, enjoy one another's company and things like that. But in a time when you have sorrow, you must also understand that sorrow is a part of life and it mustn't consume you in a, such a way that you lose all agency because the same cycle that involves sorrow also for him involves hope. And he was always full of hope. But hope is not something that just happens. You've got to work to make your hope realized. And that hope for him was always tied to the underdog, to the oppressed, and to making South Africa into a country that belonged, truly belonged to all who live in it, because God's children were firstly the poor, as far as he was concerned, and the oppressed. And he was very upset by what he saw. However, he was not immobilized. He was never passive. His Christianity was an active Christianity on behalf of those striving for freedom. Thank you, Raymond. That was Professor Raymond Sadna in Suprema Media's quality about Albert Nolan memories of a non-believer.